Um, let me uh, just see if I can pull this on. So this is a wonderful uh, experience um, being with such uh, important and uh, special people that are uh, bringing so many great ideas uh, in front of us. Uh, it feels like an initiatory experience. It feels like, uh, for me, what's going through the uh, gateway of the soul was all about. And, um, I hope to take you through a little bit of that journey, um, although it is a complex, deep, and uh, sometimes dark journey at times. But um, I have two videos, hopefully they will run smoothly. There's an intro video and an outro video. In between, I'll sandwich in all sorts of crazy uh, Marzonian ideas for your um, <laughs> glory. <laughs> so let's see if this can start. I've also been known legally as Kevin. <laughs> My name is Mars. I've also been known legally as Kevin. I changed my name for creative and magical purposes. It was a psycho-spiritual journey involving the shedding of one personality into the psychic complex of another. The same practice is common amongst Native Americans who would often find new identities from vision journeys, psychedelic voyages, and other relevant rites of passage. I believe that the major important point that impels me to speak today is the reality of the soul as the core archetype that needs embracing for humanity to gracefully transition from its current form of toxic self-destruction into metamorphic realms of imaginal beauty. I use the term imaginal or imagination not as a faint glimpse of glory or as a mere daydream and fantasy, but as what I consider to be the ground of the soul. This ground is the etheric field of energy that we call imagination, but it is more than what is commonly considered to be mere imagination. Society stigmatizes imagination as the school kid dancing around in their head while they should be learning values that effectively help enslave oneself amongst the herd of the working force and masses. I believe differently. I am saying there is an actual realm, though quite subtle compared to physical reality, which can be considered the realm of the soul. The point of this presentation is to act as the archetypal guardian gatekeeper, the ferryman, to lead you to the land of the dead so that you may see what I humbly point to verbally. Across the abyss of the milky waters of galactic being, I hope to show you that reality is much different and more intriguing than mainstream science suggests. This is a night sea journey into the other, a voyage across the abyss into the oversoul of our creative being. For me, the soul is just about as hard to talk about as is writing a term paper for one of our uh, professors here at CIS. Um, because we have so many uh, important ideas that we wish to share with each other that it's hard to control and magnify it into a focused uh, image that we can be satisfied with in our own mythic journeys. Um, now, 
what is the soul? This is, you know, this is a real, a real question, I guess. Um, the soul is apparently not very easily, easily uh, rationalized or conceptualized. If I were to be able to point to what the soul was, what kind of interest would you have in the soul after that? Um, that's why any time you try and create a conceptual model of the soul, uh, some are more interesting than others, but um, if you say that is the soul, you are definitely missing the point of what soul actually um, could mean for yourself. Um, now I know a lot of people, probably not in this room as much, but a lot of people in society, they don't believe that it exists. And, you know, um, that's, that's a consequence of our times um, and the rational paradigm because I think the soul is living in the shadow of our current rational um, scientific um, um, abstract consciousness. Um, you know, whenever, when, whenever anybody asks me, does the soul really exist? I, I say, okay, well, does the Bank of America really exist? Like, really exist? <laughs> what about, you know, Mickey Mouse? Does Mickey Mouse really exist? And, um, um, you know, but actually, interestingly enough, um, for, you know, generations of kids, Mickey Mouse really does uh, exist to these kids. Um, Walt Disney seemed to have had an ability to tap the imaginal realm, which I believe is very closely associated to the realm of the soul. Um, and, you know, this doesn't happen every day, but now I can connect Walt Disney to Jesus. And um, <laughs> glad you appreciate that. Um, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 18, 1 35. So obviously, it's the, there's not really a question, right? Uh, anybody who's been around any children, we know that they hold the promise to the future, just like we hold a certain promise to the future. And the reason I bring that up is because uh, uh, we are searching a way into, I think, into the soul. And my main thesis, it's a loose thesis, you have to be loose with the soul, you know, it's going to take you in any direction here, but, um, <laughs> is that the soul, in my life anyway, from my experience, seems to be the binding force between life and death, and the reason for living. So, we'll explore this a little bit. So, what is the toll to cross the abyss? Now, I'm sure we all know that um, American currency is losing its value, and so we cannot just place quarters on top of our eyeballs to uh, travel through the underworld. Unfortunately, that's just not going to work. There's too much debt. Um, so, I, you know, I'm trying to you know, stretch this out a little bit, but you know, I think that um, we need to give up anything that the archetypal unconscious forces of the soul actually believe is necessary for us to become better people. That might mean sanity, it might mean your security, it might mean all the control in your will. Now, I want to tell you, um, I want to tell you uh, my story. Um, <laughs> It's, it's kind of a mixture between um, crazy, fantastical, fun. It, you know, if I tell you my story, it's like a, you would think, oh, I'm just telling you a vision that I had. But no, <laughs> this was an actual occurrence of my life. Um, so when, you know, like clockwork, Saturn, I swear, this planet and this archetype comes around, as, as many of us know, every 29 to 30 years and brings, uh, it's such a complex archetype, so I don't want to get into that. But when I was 14 and a half, my dog and best friend, <sighs> his name was Sundance. And I'm just holding the space for that because there was, in retrospect, a certain beauty to the passing 
of my best friend and my dog um, because it's led me here. It's, it's really, truly led me here. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about how soul starts interweaving and, and like just it weaves its way into your life, especially when there's these psychic components, these energies that are so, you know, when I was 14 and a half and I'm living in Hollywood and I don't, I don't understand how can there, how can there be no life after death? Is that, is that really possible? How can there be life and death? At, they seemed, they seemed um, necessarily connected. But I was living in a society that said, no, you know, after you live, you die, and that's the end. This is problematic for me. And it led me, um, you know, I, it led me to a lot of good things, too, though. It, you know, this is how I got my name Mars. Um, it led me to dropping out of this crazy school, UCLA, you know, in Westwood. Uh, you know, I, it led me to the depths literally, of the streets of Los Angeles. And um, uh, I fell, I fell. After walking through all of downtown LA, I fell. And I was exhausted. And um, I fell. I was just like, here I am, I'm exhausted, I'm done. And tears just hit the cement. And I looked down. And there, there, there are these crazy eights all over, all over the cement. And I was just like, wow, that's really strange. Because I was born in 80, on 8880. And in 8888, I was eight years old. And I had a birthday cake that was $8.88, right? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, this is kind of crazy, right? No, I mean, but that moment, I, I didn't have a choice to be crazy or not. I had a choice to live or to die. And then there was this force, and it, it pulled me back, and it, it told me to look behind me. And there was, underneath the Hollywood freeway, a mural of an Egyptian holding out an onk. And above the Egyptian, and, and this four-step pyramid, there was a picture of a dog that looked exactly like my dog had looked. Now, synchronicity, this is, this is an important way that the soul reaches out to you. And it reaches out for those who seek it, by the way. Um, it's miraculous, it really is. It's, it's dark <coughs> and miraculous at the same time. Um, uh, interestingly, I think, you know, to bring some fairness to the Saturn archetype, you know, my son was born on Saturn return. So this is where I get this glue idea between the forces between death and rebirth. And um, um, this is where I've been searching for the soul. Now, so look, the skeleton key to the soul, the skeleton, makes sense. Psychic energy is derived from, the, especially deep psychic energy, is derived from events when we are, um, we, when we come to conflict with life or our society or ourselves. And this, this kind of energy allows us to start creating a new mystery for ourselves, to interweave, plant the seeds for like a new archetypal journey. And that's what it did for me. It created a love of the mystery. And I started searching, I started searching Egyptians. I found the Sphinx, you know, and it was actually built, you know, 10,500 years ago, for crying out loud, you know? And I was like, oh, society doesn't know this. Okay, I'm gonna follow this. I'm gonna tell them about the Martians, you know? <laughs> and, um, uh, but, but, but interesting enough, you know, I went through this kind of Jungian unconscious exploration on the internet. So I think it could be a new form of therapy if people would just write eight to 10 words at the core of their being, and then Google, they'd be able to figure out what's going on, you know? Um, <laughs> and, um, um, but, 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 so something usually has to happen to get you into this realm. So it's not for everybody, perhaps, but I think 
that as we go through it, you'll see that this is kind of what's going on in our, in our in society as, as a large. Now, um, Carl Gustav Jung, he, um, he understood this. He did. If anybody's read the Red Book, they know that he, he saw this. And one of the things he tried to do was create um, a program for understanding how to connect with, uh, with the soul or the unconscious, or the spirit of the depths, uh, is one uh, way that he would call it. You, know, you can call it whatever you want, whatever's meaningful to you. Um, but the point is, how do we communicate with it, for real? Um, so active imagination was his program for communication. Um, it's interesting to me that I, I've been able to do that. I've been able to turn my imagination not just into seeing, you know, a daydream or something. I mean, I have been able to see, I can with eyes open, right now and see whatever I want to see and it looks like it's existing in this room now. Now it can get kind of precarious, right? Because you're like, oh, okay, wait a minute here. What's going on, right? Is, is that pink elephant really the one through here? I mean, it looks pretty good, but um, <laughs> there is some scientific founding for this. I just want to put that out there and that involves the pineal gland, which is at the center of the brain. As a source for DMT, which is also connected to dreams and dying, and um, is a source for producing uh, inner vision, I guess you could say. Um, now, I wanted to read to you a couple of quotes from, from you. I'm like not even following my cards here, what's going on? Um, Okay, two worlds. Yes, two worlds. What two worlds do you live in? Do you live in one, two, three, four? Um, Jung, in the Red Book, talks about two worlds specifically. He says, If you remain within the arbitrary and artificially created boundaries, you will walk as if between two high walls. But if you break down the walls that confine your view, then the ancient sleeper awakens in you. Then, in a world of chaos, dwells the eternal wonder. He goes on to say, the world of the inner is as infinite as the world of the outer. Just as you become part of the manifold essence of the world through your body, <coughs> so you become part of the manifold essence of the inner world through your soul. This inner world is truly infinite. Man lives in two worlds. Two minutes. I can't get to the importance of Hillman and the Anima Mundi, but you are all very bright individuals and already know how important it is <laughs> to not just seek the personal soul, but also the world soul as well. So I would like to play the outro video. I hope this inspires us all to seek the soul. The soul is the reincarnate being of the self. The oversoul is the anima mundi, the logos, which speaks the truth when you are most open to understanding it. It is the deep psyche, and the place of dreams, visionary scene, and archetypal illumination. It is the reason you do anything, the force of evolution, and the source of integrating your life into the involutionary compass of balanced being. It is the beautiful butterfly, metamorphosed as the imaginal truth that you wish to become. We humans are caterpillars. We are searching our self for soul in the depths of consciousness to be born as butterflies once again. We seek a truth that is the imagination of ourselves. 
Hoping, believing, striving to overcome our flaws and embody our being. We yearn for the truth that is at the core of our heart. Seek that which cannot be visualized. Hope for that which can't possibly be verbalized. And we strive for the purpose of living. This is the soul as pointed to only verbally, but it is the majestic spirit swimming upon the fiery waters of that which can't be said, can't be mentioned, but can be felt. This is the reason that makes your heart beat. It is the core of your being. It is the truth that becomes beautiful when art becomes the truth of the way that you live as a majestic masterpiece. One that helps others become happy. It's the core, the purpose, the soul, reason for existing. Thank you.